Welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon, and I'm so excited that you're with us today. You know, they say that a bad cup of coffee is better than no cup of coffee. And I agree. So cheers as you grab your coffee, your tea, or whatever your yummy beverage of choice is. Well, today on the program, we are going to be talking about a pioneering spirit that is on women warriors in this season in life. And we are going to hear from two women that have said yes to the call, that have gone on the mission field. They've done it as single women. And so we're just gonna be unpacking uh, you know, if you're a leader or you know someone who feels like they're being called to the fivefold ministry or the mission field or to the local food bank, how do you get there um, with the help of the Holy Spirit? So Dr. Tanya and Reverend Linda are amazing women of God and you're going to enjoy them. But before we go and just hear about their life story, how God called them and raised them up, we're going to go to the homekeeper's kitchen and we have um, an apple treat, an apple bake that is very simple and very yummy. And Stephanie's going to introduce it to us right now. Welcome back to the homekeeper's kitchen. I have Jeanette here again, Jeanette Chabot. She's my uh, co-worker and my friend. Hi. And she's getting <laughs> <laughs> and she's getting more comfortable with coming into your homes every day. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're gonna make Apple Betty. Sounds good. I had heard the name before, had no idea what it was, found this recipe on the Pioneer Woman's website. Oh, okay. And it just sounded really interesting, so I wanted to try it, because it has apple, it has wheat bread, brown sugar and butter mm. that's it sounds easy so it's uh, well i, I just can't <laughs> wait to taste it <laughs> this sounds like the recipe for the mom who's at home doesn't want to go to the store and goes in the cabinet and goes okay what do i have i have apples what can i toss I together i might have some bread <laughs> that's right <laughs> so if you would easy. cube up the wheat bread sure. which makes it a little bit more healthy than white bread right that's what they say because I am looking for healthy recipes, and I'm learning that a lot of it is about portion control. Yes. You don't have to yes. have a ginormous piece of dessert. You can have a little piece and enjoy it, and, and that's okay. Right. <laughs> so I have a pan here. I have some butter that I'm just going to grease okay. the pan with. You're going to cube the, the bread up, little tiny cubes. Now, my cubes this, that I did this morning, they weren't as small, so it looks a little bit different. And I have some Granny Smith apples that I've um, sliced up, peeled and sliced. And I have brown sugar, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. And I have a little bit of water. So I'm gonna take some of the bread cubes and I'm gonna put them on the bottom. So a third, a third. And then I'm gonna take some of the apples, half, put them on the bottom. And the oven is set at 375. Because this takes 40 minutes to cook because these apples have to cook through. Oops. Oompa. <laughs> and then I'm going to take a third of the brown sugar. Go right over the top. It's just super simple. It's almost like a dump cake. Yeah. Have you, ever, have you made dump cakes oh, yeah. before? Where Easy you just peasy. Put, yes. But this is just unusual ingredients. So another layer of the bread so another third because we're going to top it with bread brown sugar and butter lots of butter so not the healthiest recipe but it's portion control my friends portion control butter that's what makes i it better I'm trying to learn when i'm hungry i just want all the stuff and then i get done and i'm like okay i didn't really need all of that right right yeah. <laughs> so i'm trying to learn to just have a few bites of something and see if that helps so the top layer is bread. Oh, I need that, sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, I forgot to put the brown sugar in between. That's okay. It's all gonna go in together anyway, right? So this was a cup and a half of packed brown sugar. It was three quarter cup of butter. It was three whole apples. I did four because they were really tiny. Okay. And it was seven slices of wheat bread. Oh. And I'm sure you could use other kinds. Like if if you had stuff in your house that you were trying to get rid of, you could make up something like this. Right. Okay. My hands are all sticky. Now I'm going to slice the butter in pats. 
put it over the top and you're going to cover it with aluminum foil and you're going to bake it for 40 minutes okay and then you're going to take the aluminum foil off and bake it for another five to ten and that should brown the top nice okay okay it's a lot of butter <laughs> it's a lot of butter <laughs> Uh, but, I, but I'm learning. I'm learning portion control. It's okay. I'm trying to find uh, all healthy recipes, but then you can just slide something in that's a little decadent and naughty. Sure. And just don't have as much. That's right. Did you have a favorite childhood dessert? I did. My uh, Aunt Norma made a uh, chocolate mousse cake growing up all the can time. Can you get the recipe? I can. <gasps> Let's make it. Okay, that's a little good? involved, I think. That's okay, but... we'll figure it out. Okay. Okay, so then you put the aluminum foil over, you bake it for 40 minutes, you take the aluminum foil off, you bake it for 10. Okay. Okay, are you ready to see what it looks like? Yes. Now, again, my cubes weren't as small this morning. <laughs> I went with bigger cubes. Just make the cubes oh, whatever that size looks you good. want. Oh, look. Oh, one more looks step, good. I forgot to tell you. You take a little bit of water and you sprinkle it over the top before you bake it. Okay. Okay, that's the third. But the amounts will come up on the screen, and you can get the recipe a multitude of ways. It looks a little like um, bread pudding. That's what I thought. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> that looks good. And it's so hot. <laughs> you need a little ice cream. Here we go. Ice cream would have been good. Oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. Low okay. calorie. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's so hot. Mmm, fried pudding. It's so good. That's hot. Very good. It's delicious. It is. It's so much better than I anticipated. Yeah. You only need a small portion of this because it's sweet. Yes, it is. And it's buttery, but it has apples in it. So it's a little bit healthy, right? A little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for coming on again. Thanks I appreciate for having you me. joining me. I appreciate you all joining me. You'll be able to get the recipe so many ways. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time. I don't think I ever want to just pick up an apple and bite it again. I think I want the apple Betty from now on. Um, I am really excited, um, over the top excited about the two amazing women of God that I have with me today. It's very surreal. Uh, I've gotten to serve alongside one of them for over two decades uh, just behind the scenes. And so to see her say yes to God and the great things that she's doing in partnership uh, with Dr. Tanya, it's amazing. So thank you, I love you. Reverend <laughs> Linda. Thank you, Dr. Tanya, <laughs> for you being for having with us. us today. And I know that um, you're on a hiatus or a mm -hmm. little break uh, here. You're celebrating 25 years Ooh. Of, of the ministry that mm -hmm. God's given you. Isn't that amazing? It is. You know, where does the time go, right? right. It you runs. Know, <laughs> it does. And, you know, you, I'm, both of you are just incredible um, warriors um, in, your, in your own right. You know, you went to college uh, to, at Southeastern mm -hmm. to become yeah. a missionary, and then you got your medical degree. Mm -hmm. And then you develop this ministry. Um, you've been recognized by President George Bush for <laughs> outstanding service to others. Uh, that's huge. Mm -hmm. You could have taken so many different turns. And then you worked at this station yes, for did. 25 years. That's how I met both of you. I know. And, <laughs> and, and then yeah. God started tugging on your heart. Yeah. And I literally remember us praying, crying. Yeah, and, right over there on that wall. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 but you said yes, you, you were obedient to the Lord, both of you, and I mm -hmm. honor you for it, and, and I thank you. Um, and I know there's so many other women um, and many people that are watching that they do feel a tug, mm -hmm. but they just don't know how to even start. They do mm -hmm. feel a passion. And, and I wonder if you both would just start by sharing um, mm -hmm. when God first told you to, to go. 
Well, I just want to start by saying it just hit me when you said that, um, that I was afraid not to do what he asked me to do, not to do it. Right. People say, are you scared? Well, no, because he told me to, and I'm afraid <laughs> of what will happen if I don't do yeah, it. Yeah, that's so awesome. It was, that was the fear, not about where I was going, what I was doing, because I'm one of the rare ones in my family, missionaries and pastors on both sides. Um, I guess if we went back and traced it far enough, I'd probably be a Levite. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there was a generational blessing. Mm -hmm. blessing. So I'm one of those. So it wasn't a surprise to my family or, you know, my friends here at the station that when I take my vacations, I did mission trips. So there it was just go. a natural. And then at the time when Bob DeAndre was the president, I talked to him about it and that he saw it and he's, of course, and he partnered with me in doing it and gave me time off to do a six month internship before because wow. I wouldn't do it and fail. I've seen too many there you go. That's missionaries wisdom. fail. That's wisdom. It wasn't a feel good trip. You know, right. you go and you feel good. Oh, I want to do that. It's important that you just don't feel it. But you know, and I told, you know, I got cheeky with God and said, you know, I'm not going to, I'll do this, but I'm not going to fail. You need to send me someone. So in this studio, <laughs> probably, well, it might not have been on this set, maybe in the other no. studio, but I met this doctor that was doing some crazy <laughs> war zone something. And so that's how it, I it, said I went on a trip to document. I went to document <laughs> only. Go. So there we got. That's how I started in the missions, just by working here, actually, and meeting a crazy doctor. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad she met you, crazy doctor. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've been called a lot of things. <laughs> crazy is probably the nicest yeah. thing I've been called. Well, let, me, let me tell you how crazy <laughs> these two are yeah. for Jesus is there's times or a time mm -hmm. that I called and on um, Facebook Messenger and I go, what are you doing? She goes, I'm, we're under the bed. <laughs> I said, for what? Well, there's a guerrilla warfare shooting. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to call the intercessor. She goes, it's okay. We put an offering outside the door. They'll, they'll leave Look us alone. That. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, that's true. That she is GI Jane for I you know oh, Jesus. I forgot about that. Oh yeah. I'm just like, oh, what are you doing today? It's okay. Oh, we, we, de my... we delivered ten babies this week. Oh, okay. How, by the way, how many babies in the village are named Linda or Tanya? Oh, several. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lots there's, of them. there's even a little boy they thought would be a girl, but they named him Tony. Oh, for <laughs> Tanya, Tony, <laughs> whatever, Linda, yeah. Ma, Linny, whatever, right? yeah. Well, another one funny thing is um, I'm typing about something. She goes, "Oh yes, I just got out. I was helping Dr. Tanya with a surgery, and um, and she goes, yeah, that um, they got tusked by an elephant. An elephant tusk went through them. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, y'all are amazing. <laughs> Okay, Dr. Tanya, when did you first get the call to the mission field? At first, I didn't even know you tell those stories. Yeah. Well, just to me, it's my friends. No, I, no. Well, and not they're the true whole stories. World knows. Well, yeah, and they're true stories. We're not evangelistic in, in our telling yeah. of things. Right. We're not evangelistic. Um, but I was eight, I was I was about seven years old when I got saved, and then I knew I was going to be a doctor from that point on. And then, then I went on, um, and I had a crisis of faith when I was 16, you know, as you do sometimes. And I said, God, if you will just use me. I remember I had a pink canopy bed. And I remember <laughs> kneeling beside it and said, God, if you just use me, I will do anything, go anywhere, be anything, yeah. <laughs> if you will just use me. That was my condition. Yeah. I needed to feel like I was being used. Yeah. Um, because I was the only Christian in my family. Yeah. And um, I ended up going to Southeastern where the call to missions just overwhelmed me. You know, it's where I, I learned about, you know, people needing Jesus all over the world. And I could not shake that. Yeah. And then I went on to get my medical degree because I always wanted to be a doctor. Yeah. Because, you know, one degree is not enough, Jen. Yeah, I know, you know. Some people get all the brains. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me just encourage um, you, mom, and you, grandmom, and you, praying warrior, that there's a generation of yes. 14, 15, 16 year olds, 10, 11, 12 year olds that are saying, "Use me," mm -hmm. and never stop praying. Right. And and even for those who may not, you know, um, Dr. Tanya, you know, was the only one in her family. God. Mm -hmm. The gifts and the call of God are, are irrevocable. Right. They're they're without repentance, and 
Anyway, I know you're, that is going to be touching and inspiring. I, I hope so because, you know, living, living and being the only Christian was very, very difficult. Now, since then, my whole family came of to the course. Lord. I mean, that, that's... <laughs> that we're promised that. Yes. But, you know, when you're 16 years old and you're standing in faith for mm -hmm. your entire family, yeah. you know, and, and they're living lifestyles that are so contrary to what the Word of God is, you're just... Like, oh, what do I do, God? How do I do this? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I would get myself to church. I would, I would keep, but that prayer, I will do anything, go anywhere, be anything. And that when you make a vow to mm -hmm. God, you know, the word says, I'd rather you didn't do that. Yeah. than you know, you make your vow and then you stand by it. To keep it. And I did. Yeah. You know, and all these years later, I'm doing it. Yeah, you are. And... While you were praying for your family, you were getting spiritual muscles because mm. the Lord knew he was going to send you right. to pray for the Maasai people in right. Kenya and, and pray for that nation mm -hmm. and, and, and pray for signs, miracles, and wonders mm -hmm. that come into your operating room. Mm -hmm. And so you were developing that gift then. Yeah, yeah. All warriors. I, I liked how you started it, you know, as women warriors. All warriors have to develop their skills. Right. Have to That's develop. Good, Tanya. Yeah have to develop, uh, whether it's they're in infantry, whether they're the gunners on a, a, scout, a warship yeah. or they're the scout, you got to develop those yeah. skills. So it took a, it took a while, you know, and, and here we are all these years later, getting ready to celebrate 25, 25 years. years. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay. So let's talk a bit about, um, some of the crazy things the Holy Spirit's asked you to do that were just impossible in the natural, and he, and he came through. Uh, well, the easiest one for me, and this is no secret, um, me, you know, I'm a studio girl, I'm a photographer, I do arts, I do things. Schooling was not my gifting. Send me to PE, send me to the studio. <laughs> send Art me, class, yes. music. Schooling, um, I'm dyslexic, so there's, a, you know, all kinds of abilities. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, I get to Africa, and what is it that God places me in an impossibility? I now have a school. Yeah, an academy. <laughs> Why not? Linda's Academy. <laughs> Why not? The principal, the dean, the administrator, you're all of it. Why right? not? Teach, of course. Why not not excel in school, but let's have a school, because Linda. Because God takes the foolish things <laughs> of the, the world to confound well, the world. Why ones. not? So how many children are at Linda's Academy? Well, today we have 100... And 50. and 50 in December and January we'll enroll and we'll have 175. Oh. Yeah. But I, don't don't forget, you talk about this dyslexic in school yes. and having a school. <laughs> Not only did did she God do that impossibly, yeah. but she went back to school. Oh, and let me just and say, and obtained two other certifications. Everybody three certifications. out there listening, <laughs> tell it's them. never too late to go to school and learn. <laughs> the schooling part is good. It's the testing part you have yes. to watch out for. <laughs> I know. Well, but I mean, you're but talking. You, it's nothing. God did it. That's that's top huge. of the class. High five me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you inspired her with all your like, degrees. You I know? mean, to go back and, and get her ordination. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot to it study is. for. It uh, is. Then to get her CNA, and then she went on and just got her phlebotomy. <gasps> Wow. Let me check it out. I know. I mean, I have very small <laughs> veins. Next. If you can get my veins, <laughs> oh, you I are could. good. I have a few tricks. Okay. Well, I need to know them. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you. So, Those are huge. You're so right. to say, you know, the warrior thing, you have yeah. to be equipped. Yeah. You know, it's not just going to yeah. happen. No. It doesn't, the Holy Spirit doesn't just fall down on you and all of a sudden you're like, da, 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 I can do this. You <laughs> no, know, like you said, 10 years ago and looking at where you, where you are today, it's, you have to study to show yourself mm -hmm. approved. Yeah, you Timothy have was to. Kind of, well, yeah. Paul said that to Timothy. He right? did. Yeah. Study to show yourself yeah. approved. And here she is now running a school that in January we're going to be opening junior high. <gasps> because <laughs> because junior if we high, stopped get your where jacks we were out. at. <laughs> seriously, if we stopped where we were at, yeah. our little girls would be circumcised. Yeah. In December, I don't mean to date the show, but... And just a few months from now, the little girls that started me when they were four years old would be circumcised and married to old men with four, five, six other wives. And I could not look at them, Dr. Tanya could not look at that in our church 
and these beautiful young ladies that know the word now and can speak to you in their third language just as clear as a day and be okay with them being circumcised and young wives mm -mm. could not. I got goosebumps thinking about it. So pray, we have a school to build in a few months. God will make a way. <laughs> yes, he God will. will make a way. Will. Yeah. Yes, we need yeah. to we need to take a team and come you do. down. And do some shows and yeah. love on some babies. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, we're be believing great. God. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Tell another impossible situation. Another impossible. <laughs> so my my career hasn't always been in Kenya. You know, for 25 years I did global medicine, yeah. and so I was in every war and every um, disaster situation that that happened globally. And um, I think probably the, the one that just, I, I would stand there in amazement was during the Balkan War. And I was the chief medical officer, the chief over this repatriation camp, me. <laughs> Seriously. Southeastern graduate. I'm, I'm, I'm just an ordinary gal. You're extraordinary. Yes. You're a masterpiece. But seriously, I, you know, I don't have any medals on my chest, you know, and I've not been to war school and everything, but I was sitting in security briefings with generals wow. and NATO leaders wow. and all of these big people from the BBC and CNN and, you know, all those people that were covering things, you know, and I had to make sure that, that the people moved from one place to another medically safely. And I had the ability to command wow. the troops wow. to move helicopters. <laughs> and wow. and I, would, I would walk through the camp and I would say, I would say, Toto, <laughs> what are you doing? Kansas anymore? <laughs> I understand what am I that. Doing? <laughs> what wow. am I doing? Wow. And God would always remind me in, in situations like that. God would always remind me. Remember, you prayed. Yeah. <laughs> if you'll use me, yeah, right back. I'll to go it. anywhere, mm -hmm. do anything, wow. be anything. Wow. So when I felt inadequate, because I was very, very inadequate. Mm. I'm not a war strategist. I'm not. <laughs> You're a kingdom war strategist. Oh, well, yes, that's yeah. true. That's very that's true. true. But in those situations, in the natural, yeah. I should not have been there. Yeah. I shouldn't have had mm -hmm. a say in anything. But he trusted you, know? you. But God trusted me and, and he you used said me. Yes. And, and you I said, said yes. Because yes. you could it was have said, simple. You could have said it's too daunting. Yeah. It's too much, mm -hmm. God. Yeah. And if he had told me what I was going to be doing in Kenya for the last 16 <laughs> years. You would have said no. I would have. No. I don't think I would have said no because that's not in my DNA. Yeah. I would have said no. <laughs> <laughs> School. Confession. No. It's good. No. It's good. <laughs> I had a strong mom. Yeah. My mom used to sing that song by Helen Reddy. I am woman. Hear yeah. me roar. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and my mom, you know, for many years she wasn't a Christian, but she always told us, you can do anything. Yeah. You know, but then when I decided to do anything, she's like, well, no, stay home. <laughs> Don't want you off in those yeah, places. Do yeah, Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> yes. Um, let's talk about your experiences in ministry as a woman and as a single woman, because I know that there's single women watching and they want to do something great for God, but they mm -hmm. bought into this lie that you have to have a partner. So, you know, in our last <laughs> little segment here, let, let's speak to that. Speak. Oh, I'm, I'm going to easily jump in. Just finish it up right right here. Okay. You do have a partner. <laughs> yes, you do. Mm. You do. Isaiah 54. Mm. Right it's on the wall. wall. Sing, <laughs> oh barren <laughs> woman. You wrote it on there. I know, you're you creator, wrote it on there. your husband. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We're done. <laughs> I can drop yeah, the we're mic. done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, Doctor, <laughs> it's true. You're right. You're right. No excuses, right? No, you do. You but do. you know, I think um, young young women today, we're talking because we're women, um, they get afraid because you mm -hmm. look at a world that, that is, is still a man's world. It is. And particularly the Christian world yeah. is still a man's world. It still world. is. Yeah. And not to offend anybody, no. No, I, and I don't mean that at all, but they get scared yeah. because they think if I don't have a life mate, you know, a husband, then, then mm. I'll never reach what God has. And I, I would say that's not true because God's purposes yeah. will never, ever be stopped. That's never. Right. That's right. Never. Whether you, if you don't agree with it, then he will go next to, to somebody yeah. else and pick them. Now, I never thought 
I would be single and, you know, I wanted to be married and, and have children. But as I've, I've grown in my walk with the Lord, I could not do what I'm doing. Right. I could not have the freedoms That's I right. have and be in the dangerous situations I've been in if I had a husband yep. and children. Because that, that speaks to a different area that That's I'm sure right. you'll be talking to to women about yeah. home and and children yes. and callings it's a whole different a different thing and and god put within me this ability to be single yes mm -hmm. it is a god-given gift it is a gift a gift it is please tell the ladies the young yeah. people the women it is a gift it is. and you embrace that gift and when you embrace that gift man god can take you anywhere yeah yes and not buy into the culture and not buy into well-meaning people that tell you in order to be successful in the Lord or the kingdom, mm -hmm. you have to have a spouse. Right. Yeah. Um, because you're right, he is your spouse. Mm -hmm. We have two minutes left. Yeah. So I just want to, I just want to set you guys free to minister to anyone watching, pray over them, speak over them, encourage them for what, whatever's on your heart. Well, I'll go first and I'll just say, if you are thinking that it's your time or you're supposed to do this, find a good leader, find someone that's going to mentor you and study <laughs> and take the test. Um, you can do it. You can. There, this only you stopping you. God's gifted you. God's given you the ability. Um, pray and follow him and he's going to lead you. He's going to direct you. He's going to be the voice behind you telling you which way to go. So just do it. And I'll just add to that, um, perfectly, ladies, my heart would be that you just embrace mm -hmm. all that you are and all that you can become because God is bigger than anything. He is. He is. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you guys and you bless me. I, I encourage everyone, you know, if you are looking for a place to invest, uh, New Frontiers is a wonderful place to sow seed. Uh, prayer partners, I, you know, to pray for them, yes, to, to come on mm -hmm. a missions trip, to sponsor someone in Linda's Academy, to help with the build out of the school, to send medical supplies mm -hmm. and equipment, go on their website, encourage them, pray for them, Thank you guys, and thank you uh, for caring about causes like this. Uh, I'm Jennifer Mallon, and I appreciate you so much joining us for Come Home today, and we'll see you next time.